first of all, I loved the film. Amazing job. This is one of the, you know, it's interesting because you guys are so good at building tension. Like every single time that, uh, that, you know, we had those long scenes of, of just building the tension. It, it got to me. And it's been a long time since I've seen a horror movie like that. So, uh, Tord, I know that uh, you had a personal experience in in, uh, in your duplex. Can you talk to me about how those events inspired the film? Uh, yeah, we, we, um, we had some neighbors moving out. And, and um, one night when they had left, I heard strange noises coming from the, from the other side. And I, and I knew that that side uh, was empty. Uh, so I started talking to my wife and first off, she didn't hear. And, um, and I was like, am I imagining this or, and later on, uh, I heard the noises again and talked to her and she was like, yeah, I think I heard something. And I never got an explanation for this. And probably just was just like the new neighbors checking in, taking measures or whatever. Uh, but that inspired me because Oscar and I was uh, at that time, we had uh, talked to this family up north in Sweden who had experienced some really creepy stuff. And those two things together uh, really became the inspiration for the movie. So, yeah. I want to talk about that for a second, too, because there's also this family that claimed that there was some kind of evil entity that took their child or their child in 2014. Um, Oscar, can you talk to me about how that kind of shaped the film along along with uh, Torrid's story? Yeah, it's loosely based on things we heard because uh, people know that we're writing screenplays and doing movies. We haven't we hadn't done anything uh, close to horror by then, but but uh, we uh, we we had a friend, a common friend that that told us to talk to this family. So we actually texted, uh, you know, chatted with them on Facebook and all that. But we promised them to not say too much about them, sure. and it's loosely based on that. It, it, it's... Their story is not as gruesome. I mean, they there's no dead children or sure. stuff. Yeah. Like we, we we made it much more gruesome in the movie, but but the, I think like the the whole family dynamics was there in their story, not being believed and, and being like the stepmom's thing, and uh, eventually moving out because they still believe that some kind of entity was after the child. You know, I so. love that you guys were able to tie in uh, the stepmom aspect of this because there is a, there is something to be said about that. Now, me as a stepdad myself, it, you, you can kind of relate to it a little bit where, you know, are things happening with with Lucas or are they not? So what 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 inspired that added element to the film? I think we, we have a lot of friends and also my sister. She's like a in Sweden, you call it bonus parent, you know, uh, so an extra and she, she and they had, and it's always a little bit complicated you know sure yeah how are things going i i can't get too involved or can i and it takes time to build the, a sort of confidence and and that that child was a little bit older but we thought what if this happened a little bit earlier when someone is like not that talkative and can't tell a coherent story and all that and and also we'd like to and and we wanted to play with the with the notion of like is she actually doing something right to the kid and but the way we tell it it's it, nobody believes that she is because it's her story but in, in an earlier version there was there was actually doubt because uh, we told it from a different angle and and i think that's where we found the inspiration because we needed another story and we didn't want it to be spectacular but smaller like a family sure. thing now, uh, yeah, doing horror is almost kind of like being a cinematic magician. It's it's always like this, uh, whether or not you can like trick the audience into believing things. You guys did a really good job at it. So one of the questions I have for you is how much of, of the horror elements were practical versus digital? And and uh, how did you guys make those decisions? I mean, we started, we started out uh, with the idea that everything was supposed to be practical. So while shooting the movie, uh, we really uh, um, didn't think we were going to do any CGI uh, at all. But then uh, uh, we had to do some reshoots and, um, and we couldn't get Troy to, to come back to Sweden because of the pandemic uh, and everything. Yeah. So we needed to add those uh, CGI elements. And when, while we did that, we did some other like um, a kid in a window, stuff like that, because of the pandemic. So I think if it weren't for the pandemic, we wouldn't have any CGI at all, because both me and Oscar love practical effects and seeing things in camera, knowing like when you're doing sure. it, it, this is working. It's scary. 
You know, it's interesting that you told me that because had you not said that, I, I would have assumed most of all of this was uh, done practically uh, because it, it really gives that that horror vibe that, that everything's done practically. And I agree with you. It adds that ad added element. But, you know, COVID, you know, who would have thought? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, both of you have such an extensive background in horror. Can you, and you really understand, as we said earlier, uh, building the art of tension. And, and it's, I feel like it's almost a, a lost art with a lot of uh, horror movies we see nowadays. But can you talk to me about your, uh, your ideology about crafting tension in a film? I, I think we took the whole thing. We've never done horror before. Oh, really? Anything. No, never. I thought we you did guys uh, did a horror series. Yeah, the horror series, yeah. right. But that wasn't actually scary for real, I think. It was mostly a little bit comical and more to the slasher type of... of but sure. but I, I, we took the thing really seriously and studied up. Like, And there's there's no book you can read to tell right. you how to do it. So we, I think we studied everything that we liked and, and yeah. saw how did they do it. And then we tried to do it in the same way, but not, not the same. The, the scenes aren't the same, but in the same way and and we shot a lot of extra material so we could so we could but i mean we were there. so for uh, we were so scared that the movie wasn't going to be scary because yeah, like oh, we're from great. Sweden, we yeah. don't we don't have this big uh, tradition of doing horror movies uh so we watched all our favorite american movies or and directors and and we were so so prepared and and did the homework and really so it's really I'm so glad you're saying this about the about the tension and everything because we put so much work into that because that was scary for us. Like, what if this movie doesn't become as scary as we want it? Then it's nothing. Like, right. it's a comedy without laughs, a, a horror movie without screams. So I mean, yeah, it, it's it's almost like a musical number where you're building up to this crescendo, and you have that in this film where I'm like holding on and like, oh, what's gonna happen? And you get you know you get you get diverted into something else, but. That's what I love about the beauty of filmmaking. But I want to want to talk about uh, Eddie Erickson Dominguez because he's brilliant in this movie on so many different levels. What did he bring to the role of Lucas that wasn't on the page? Oh, I, I think, think, yeah, go ahead, Tor. No, uh, but I think for us, Lucas was, uh, he was kind of like nothing on the page because it's he was just like the little kid. Like sure. he's scared or he's, He's nothing to us. He's a MacGuffin in a way. But yeah. then when, when Eddie came out and we saw him in the scenes, uh, like that character became so, so important. Oh, yeah. For all the scenes. Like he's a, he's a real person. And, and he was so, I mean, he's five years old. Uh, when we did the movie it's that's tiny. incredible that is incredible so i have a six-year-old and and i just know how hard it is to get them yeah. to do something so yeah. wow that what it, that's incredible that was really i mean it was special working with someone who's five years old and but we 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 designed like this method working with him that uh, after a while we could do stuff that we never thought we could have done like these right. long 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 takes with uh, shots with dolly shots with him walking by himself, doing stuff, reacting to things that won't be there until post-production and uh, not looking into the camera. And all this took a lot of work because like a five-year-old gets easily distracted. And in a horror movie, if someone looks at something, you think that's something special. So we had sure. to just pull his uh, attention all the time and it took a lot of work. But in the end, uh, I mean, he's, he's uh, such a great little kid. And he no. made, the movie. he really made the movie. Yeah, he yeah, really he brought did. that character Lucas to life. Yeah, yeah, he did. And and we allowed ourselves to toss the planning for his scenes out the window and start again with what we'd learned like for the first week. And like, we can do more with him. We can push it because yeah. we were, his performance was supposed to be like edited in, you know, cut right. to him. Yeah. And, and we found out quickly that we could follow him and do things that we never thought was possible. And so we just allowed ourselves to just to the horror of everyone else, the team and, and, all, and all those people, just toss that and do it another way. And we change that like every week. And that that's amazing. Pretty much killed us when we shot it. But but that's you have when you when you when things can get better, you just have to push it. Just do it. Even yeah, though all, the, all the producers, they were like, you have to cast an older shy. You cannot cast this five year old. He's great. Yeah. But he's too. I mean, it, it, this, it, this is not a good idea. 
yeah. and we liked him so much so we, yeah. but but i mean it could have been a different movie if we had had to shoot it in that style because now you know, all the scenes is done in the same style even the scenes with him and we didn't think that would be possible at the beginning so it's it's incredible they tell you never to work with children and, and animals and and here you guys really lucked out but you know you guys it shows that you guys really did your home, uh, homework it really shows on the screen but uh, in the course of doing your homework and in the course of making this film what is it that you learned about the horror genre that you can take to other projects I'd say that it's it's one of the hardest ones. So you have to do your homework and, and get things right from the beginning because you you can save it to one degree, but but it's unforgiving in a sense. Right, right. Because if you cut it up too much or if you do the sheep stuff, you, it it it's not scary. I think absolutely. It's, and I think yeah, also yeah. like trust your you have to trust your gut feeling. Like this is scary. It's going to be scary. But we're still nine months away from this being scary because we have to edit it, right. sound design. And during these nine months, so many people like producers and people like that, suits, they will tell you, this is not scary. Take it away. Take it away. This is not scary. We had so many people telling us that and we st stuck to it. It became scary. So that was a great lesson for us. Like you have to trust yourself. And yeah, because we know what this thing will be when the sound is on and the grading and everything. When it's yeah. finished, it'll be so scary. But and I feel it to a certain, a, a tiny bit of tingling, and that will become horrible when, uh, or terrific in, in horror in when a it's bad way. <laughs> it'll yeah. be right. Well, look. I think you guys did a really good job of building tension. This reminds me of those old school horror films and, and the pacing is so methodical, it gets you to think. So you guys nailed it, man. You guys did a fantastic job and I appreciate your time. I really do. Thanks. Thanks Thank guys. you so much. Thanks so much. Bye.